Are micro LED and micro RGB the same technology? When will RGB backlight technology become affordable? Is OLED gonna get any cheaper? Which came first, plasma or LCD? And what's the number one killer of LCD TVs? All of that and more coming up on Just Ask Caleb. What's up everyone, I'm Caleb. Welcome to Caleb Rated and our new show, Just Ask Caleb, which goes live every Saturday morning. Make a note of it. Got a tech question? Just ask Caleb. I know, I know. The marketing gurus I have locked in the basement worked overtime for that one. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm the marketing guru and you have my permission to make fun of me for that really stupid joke. Before I get to the questions, I just wanted to say thanks in advance for being patient as we get things up and running. In the case of this show, that means a more scant number of questions, at least for this episode, but that, honestly, is probably for the best for now, at least as far as Zeke is concerned, because in general, we don't have a massive B-roll library. And what I mean by that is, all that pretty B-roll that you're used to seeing in videos that I've made in the past, that all came from a huge library of B-roll that got built up over time. We shot a lot of video and we stored it all and we had this gigantic library to go back to whenever we needed to. This channel has no such library yet. So let's say I'm talking about 4K Blu-ray players or CDs or just discs in general, right? We haven't yet shot B-roll of our Magnetar or Panasonic players or even our original Sony Blu-ray player the first Blu-ray player ever sold, got that here, got no B-roll of that. Now eventually we will have that kind of supporting imagery, but for now we can only grab stuff on a per video basis. And even then we kind of have to weigh our priorities depending on production schedule. And well, tonight for instance, we're shooting late at night, probably gonna get tired. Not sure we're gonna shoot a lot of B-roll. All of this is to say, thanks for your patience, but know this, every single video will be better than the one before it. And honestly, that's kind of fun. It's like watching your kid grow up all over again. And I kind of like that. Anyway, with all of that said, let's get this inaugural episode in the can, shall we? I am stoked. And we're gonna start with a question that came in from someone. <laughs> I accidentally deleted their screen name. So if this question is yours, please let me know. And also I apologize. Anyway, the question came in as, Micro RGB LED versus micro LED. Is micro LED the same as micro RGB or are they the same technology? Thank you, please answer my comment. I like to know if it's the same technology, smiley face emoji. That is exactly how it came through and it was rather entertaining, so I read it that way. Okay, answer time. So the actual technology that's RGB LEDs that are less than 100 microns, ergo micro RGB LED. That technology is fundamentally the same, or at least very similar. But the application of that technology under each of those terms is very different. And that is why Samsung caught some side eye when it showed up what it was calling RGB micro LED uh, at the CES trade show. The reason why is micro LED is the term that we've gotten comfortable with to describe an emissive display in which the light emitting technology makes up the pixels and thus the picture. Plasma was emissive, OLED is emissive, and micro LED is what we have been calling the next emissive display. It's what you find in Samsung's The Wall and all kinds of high definition, ultra large displays like the crazy bright LED screens that you'll see at stadiums now or in Times Square. Micro RGB LED and even RGB mini LED refers to the use of RGB LEDs as a backlight for an LCD TV. LCD TVs are what we call transmissive displays where the light source passes through a bunch of stuff on its way to becoming a picture. The light is transmitted, hence transmissive, from one point to another. So in both cases, we're talking about tiny little red, green, and blue LEDs, but how they're used to make a picture is very different. At Majetsky writes, how does micro RGB work for glare issues? Does it help create an anti-glare display screen? Answer, it does not. At the end of the day, Samsung's micro RGB LED TV is still an LCD TV. It's a very advanced LCD TV. It's very bright, it's extremely colorful, but 
The front of the screen itself is still basic LCD. So to knock down glare and reflections, the surface of that screen is gonna need a coating or there will need to be a filter layer in there somewhere. At Celio Gwim, y'all screen names are crazy. Great video, Caleb. I'm curious how long it'll take before this tech becomes financially accessible. Like when we start seeing these panels at Walmart or Costco for a reasonable price. OLED has been mainstream for almost a decade and it's still not exactly cheap. So do you think RGB tech will end up being more expensive than WOLED or current OLED panels? And along the same lines at Travelin' Smooth said, so glad you're talking about this. This future technology has made me really excited. I can't wait to see what TCL, Sony, Samsung, et cetera, et cetera, will bring to the table. Hopefully this will cause OLED to reduce its price on its TVs. Answer time. So I think those are both great questions because I think a lot of folks are curious about this RGB backlighting technology, what it's gonna do to the TV market uh, as a whole. Uh, but also it's something we need to learn about to really understand the technology and where TVs are going. So I suspect that since the backlight portion of these RGB backlit TVs is what's super custom here, uh, that it's, well, clearly it's feasible to make it, but I think it's uh, now more feasible to make it and to scale up production. I think the hard part has been done. And although we may not see these things just flying out of factories, I think it's going to scale up pretty quick. I also know that making the backlight plane is not cheap, but I think that manufacturing is gonna involve and it will get much less expensive soon. I actually think the most challenging part of putting these things together, the most difficult thing to pull off here is the processing that keeps the backlight and the color filter working together. Now, now that that's been figured out, I think we're gonna see this tech getting more and more affordable. Although I wouldn't say it's gonna get cheap like next year. And I think that's because this, at the end of the day, is business. And TV brands will want to enjoy having a new hotness that they can sell at a premium. So my guess is that RGB backlighting will be much more commonplace and much less expensive in like five years, is my guess. But you know what? If anyone can shock us, it's Hisense or TCL. So I guess we're just gonna have to see. Now, as for OLED, OLED has been around for 12 years now. And even though manufacturing has gotten easier and less expensive, I think it's reached its limit for now. I don't think it's going to get radically easier or less expensive to make OLED than it is now. I do think that pretty soon we'll be able to print OLEDs with amazing accuracy and very high yield. Eventually we'll get to that. And that's when OLEDs will get crazy inexpensive. But I don't know when that's gonna happen. They're trying to make it happen now, still hasn't, feel like we're a few years out. Until that happens, OLED's not getting any cheaper. I'm really sorry to tell you that, but it's gonna stay about where it is now. And the big OLEDs are gonna be crazy expensive because of how hard they are to make. Don't count on some other TV technology like RGB backlighting, making OLED any less expensive. Because at the end of the day, the reason OLED is expensive is that it's expensive and hard to make. At Fasuli2751 writes, OLED should get an RGB version two instead of just W OLED and QD OLED. The white pixels could be RGB just like RGB LED. All right, answer time. So I think I get what you're going for there. You'd like to see something new and advanced for OLED besides the two dominant types of OLED that we have now. And we do love new stuff, don't we? The thing is, the reason a true RGB OLED doesn't exist now, at least not in a commercial TV that you can go buy at the store, it's because the blue OLED compound degrades significantly faster than the red and green compounds do. That's why some folks are excited by what FOLED or PH OLED or phosphorescent OLED could represent. Since FOLEDs convert almost 100% of the electricity that they get into light instead of heat, they may not need to be driven as hard and could last longer, perhaps long enough that a true RGB OLED could be fashioned out of FOLED. I know I'd love to see that in my lifetime. I have seen a true RGB OLED once and it was spectacular but it was also ridiculously expensive and it probably only lasted a year or so before it had to be tossed in the bin. Can you imagine an OLED TV you had to throw away after a year? Y'all would be livid, that's not gonna happen. 
Thanks so much for joining us on this first episode of Just Ask Caleb. What did you think? Please let me know in the comments. What do you like? What do you want to see change? I listen to everybody and I implement everything that I possibly can. You guys are the reason that I'm here. You're the reason that this channel is successful. Thank you so much. And along the lines of making this channel successful, like, comment, subscribe, all the normal YouTube stuff. Once again, I appreciate your support tremendously and I will see you on the next video. Are you sure? Are you sure you're sure?